What is going on? This is Cody, and you are tuned into B Boy 45, broadcasting from the Seacrest Studio here at Children's Hospital, Colorado. And it is an awesome afternoon with a special edition of the latest news to keep you in the groove with Maya. Maya, why is today's edition so special? Because Tom Riley is calling in. Tom Riley on the line. Woo! Welcome. What is up, Tom Riley? How are you? I'm really good. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being here with us. I'm going to throw it over to Maya. I'm going to disappear, and uh, uh, I'll be watching from the wings. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for calling in. I've been so excited to talk with you. Oh, Maya, thank you so much. And thank you for having me. I mean, you get such fancy guests on here. I don't know why you're talking to me and you're not talking to J-Lo or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, my first question for you um, is, when was the moment you first knew you wanted to be an actor? Oh, that's such a, well, that's such a good question. Um. I mean, I have this memory of this this theatre show I saw as a kid, and I don't know if this is really what happened, but like it's become one of those things that I remember so clearly mm -hmm. that I've begun to think this must be this must be it. We have this show in England. I don't know if you have it here, but it's called um, the so the Sooty and Sweep Show or the Sooty Show. It's about these puppets, just this like little bear puppet and a little. A, a dog puppet and then there's a panda puppet too and it was a big tv show and then it would go on tour around little towns in england um and uh let me turn that do not disturb on so we don't get bothered um and uh yeah so it would go on it would go on um various towns and you kids would go along they sit in the audience and they watch um and i uh i remember watching it and i think it was about a haunted man it was like the, these these puppets in a haunted mansion and i remember feeling scared like being i don't know what five or six and being scared but the thing i remember most weirdly was that i was amazed that this show could make people feel like this like there was something you could go and see where people could perform and they could act and you could be made to feel something different and so that was the moment where i sort of realized i guess the power of it and that i wanted to be up there doing it rather than in the audience oh cool yeah um so uh you got your start um actually in theater and um, then you made it to Broadway. Uh, do you remember how you felt on opening night? Of On Broadway? Yes. I do remember how I felt, actually, because um, it was the biggest theatre I'd ever worked in before or since. I think it was like 1,500 seats. It was an incredibly difficult play it was arcadia by tom stoppard which is very wordy and long and have and it's, and it's exist you know it's been there's been wonderful hit productions of it before so we really felt the need to make it you know a, a good one because we knew we were standing in the opening in the shadow of all these great productions from before mm -hmm. and the play opens with me already on stage myself and one other actor bell powley uh, on stage and the curtains rise and we're just sat there behind the thing so i remember being sat behind that curtain, not have, not knowing what was on the other side, waiting, waiting, waiting for it to begin, and then the curtain rising, and just that feeling of there's, I don't know, th th a thousand people just staring and unable to look at them. I remember it so clearly. It was probably the most scared I've I've been, I think, before doing a performance. Was that one for sure? That first night, and then it got easier as it went on. Oh, cool. Um what did you do to celebrate your Broadway debut? What did I do? Wow, I can't remember. I mean, it was it was one of I, I think it was one of those things where so much was 
happening and you in so much leads up to that first night there's so much nerves in the cast and you, you're working towards this one night where you know everything where you know all your hard work is finally going to be seen by people so i think i either did one of two things i either went to the bar afterwards with all the cast or i fell asleep immediately and i don't, <laughs> and I don't know which one it was um but like they were both my own but they were celebrations in their own way yeah um uh, so do you have a favorite Broadway show? Um, well, funnily enough, while I was there, what did I see? I saw what opened at a similar time. Book of Mormon opened at the similar time. Uh, a, sh- a play called Jerusalem, which is a, a brilliant play in London, for, had its opening night um, at the same time. But I, I, mean, I went to see The Music Man with Hugh Jackman this year. Uh, and I, I didn't know that I did not know the musical at all. Like I'm so British. I did not know about these, like the small town Americana thing. And I had such a blast. Like it was so much fun just giving yourself over to this. And he, you know, he's amazing. And Sutton Foster was amazing who played the lead woman opposite him. And it was just so full of like energy and life. And the people around us were like so into it. It was a really special experience. Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I've listened to a few songs on that soundtrack, but I actually don't know what the show's about. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah, I mean, it's about, it's about a con artist who moves to a a small town and, uh, manages to, to scare everyone into thinking they need him to be there. And he convinces them that they all need to buy instruments and and costumes for a band because he claims to be a a, a a a a band leader and he's not and it's about the like his whole con falling to pieces but what he learns along the way oh wow that sounds really interesting it's fun yeah um so you were in uh the movie pushing dead which i love because you're like a psych fan right Yes. Yes. I, um, so you know yeah. James James the wonderful James Rodet. Yeah. 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 Um yeah, I I just I love that movie. Um how did that opportunity come about? Well, I know James through uh my my wife was friends with James anyway. And uh and so we knew each other socially. And then when this this film came up and it was a real passion project for James, it was really important to him. It's a film um about the AIDS crisis in San Francisco uh, San Francisco and um and sort of drug prices and that sort of thing quite but it was a comedy even though it sounds like it's it's heavy duty and uh and he it was he was really passionate about it and then this part came up to pay play his boyfriend in the in the um in the movie and he just like texted me and said do you fancy coming along and doing this and then i spoke to the director who was incredible and um and i and, and i was like i 100 percent want to try this crazy different sort of weird experimental film and it was it's brilliant i'm really proud of it yeah oh cool yeah um so uh you were in the netflix show the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) uh which is um a long title yeah. 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 Um normally I have to take a breath in my <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh but that's um another one of your projects that I love. Um when you read the script, did you get all of the movie references? Uh, yes. I mean, it was very, very clear when it came to me that this was going to be a show that kind of, um, was a, a almost parody, but a very straight face parody of like things like the, the gone girl or the girl on the train or the woman in the window or all those sort of classic pot boiler thrillers. And, um, and when we were shooting it, even then we were sort of saying, this it feels we're doing this so straight face, like, is this is this a good idea to do this like as straight faced as this and never wink at the audience and be like we we're you know we're, we're this is a joke this whole thing's a joke 
<laughs> and when it came out, it came out exactly as the creators had hoped it would. That some people were angry. They were like, "This is." I thought this was this was ripped. People didn't even realize it was a joke until the final episode. Some people, yeah. which was was really great. We we thought, "Oh, we've done it." We people were completely invested. Um, but definitely, when I got the script, it was it was ridiculous on the page. Um, yeah, yeah, fun. <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I, my mom and I watched it and I think like two days we were so sucked in. Yeah. It's a real binger. Like we, I've, I've had more messages about that than anything I've ever done. Like just people who watch the whole thing in a day and just, you know, loved it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so were some of the scenes um, hard to stay in character because they were so absurd and darkly funny? I mean, there's the one that we that I, I keep going back to because I do not know how we how we got through it, and I couldn't really say this on the on the press tour because it was a spoiler. So people asked that question when we were were, were promoting it and. And both Kristen Bell and I would say, oh, it was this scene at the beginning where they meet each other and he says how amazing her artwork is. And we were like, you know, laughing because it, you know, it was it was all sort of very over the top. And, you know, we were laughing on the day. But the one that really made me laugh that I couldn't say at the time was the one with the ventriloquist dummy in episode four, where I reveal that I have a ventrilo I'm a ven I'm an amateur ventriloquist and I have to do it so, I mean, so seriously. And a lot of the takes, and we didn't actually end up using any of the takes, but we would have the, hold on, I've got, I've got a sock here for no reason. So I'll show you, which won't be any good for the people on the radio, but I'll show you. So <laughs> I'd have the, I'd have the puppet. And then as I was talking, I would turn the puppet's head to me. And, and I'd say sort of things like, you know, when I, when I had this terrible news, I didn't know how I go on. And I just have the puppet look at me and look back and we couldn't, we could not get through it, but they didn't use any of those takes because it was too silly. That's how serious we were trying to be, but we couldn't, we couldn't get through it. Uh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, you played uh, Leonardo da Vinci and da Vinci's demons. Um, and the show was historical fiction, but were there any special challenges to playing a historical figure? I mean, he, oh, definitely, 100%. I think it helps that this is someone who um, who had been dead for hundreds of years, and so there weren't too many people around who could say, hold on, I knew him, and he wasn't like that. Um <laughs> But there was still, you know, he's still a very important figure for a lot of people, for a lot of communities. And we felt like we had to, we had to do it right. While at the same time, the show was silly. Like it was a, it, it knew it was a fun fantasy adventure and that there was, you know, the secret societies and magic. And, but at the same time, you've put this real person in the middle of that world. So you, you have a, a responsibility to, to, to make both sides happy. Um, so it was definitely a challenge doing the things that we knew he did, like writing with both hands. Like I try to teach myself how to do that sword fighting with two hands, like, cause he was ambidextrous. So that, that sort of stuff we tried to do that, th those were the biggest challenges I'd say, certainly when, when we were shooting. Wow. Yeah. Um, so uh, what song, um, when it plays, do you automatically uh, start singing along to? Wow, oh, what a great question. What song do I start singing along to? There's definitely an answer. <laughs> do you know, <laughs> this is embarrassing. Do you know, uh, Honey, I'm Good? By Andy yes. Brammer. There yeah. you go. That for what for whatever reason, that song. <laughs> I just get me, get me tapping my feet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I love Andy Grammer, so I, yeah, you're a I fan. get that. You're yeah. a grammar fan. Yeah. Um so uh what song do you always sing along to but sing the wrong words? Oh, probably something by Bjork. You know, like I love Bjork and have loved Bjork for years, but like her recent albums, the melodies aren't don't seem as in, to interest her quite as much. The music's incredible, but like I can't make out all the lyrics, but I'll sing. 
I'll sing anyway <laughs> and I'll make it up and I'll upset everyone around me. <laughs> Yeah, I um yeah, there are definitely um some songs that I can't like I can't with if like there's a lot of like drums or whatever, uh -huh. like I can't hear the words, so I would just like sing what I think they're saying and then I realize that's not what they're saying. But that's okay. That's just yeah. as much fun, right? Like you're yeah. still just singing along. It's yeah. it's all about just like be like feeling like you're free and loose and having fun and no one's there listening. Yeah, unless they are, in which case you probably should if if you if they're a paying audience, you probably should have prepared harder. But if not, go yeah. go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so is there a show that you are currently obsessed with? Well, I have just finished watching, we just finished watching The Bear on FX, which is a really, which is a great show about a, a restaurant in Chicago. Um, and that's, that's great. We're watching a British show called Back to Life, which is on Showtime. You can watch that on Showtime. Um, what else? And we watched the re the rehearsal on HBO. Nathan Fielder's show, the rehearsal. Oh, cool! Mm. I yeah. recommend all three of those. They're all great. I won't say the things oh. that we watched that I didn't love because that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll have to remember those. So, because my mom and I are always looking for new shows. Oh, great! Have you seen uh, what uh, Yellow Jackets? That was something else. I'm trying to think of other stuff. I haven't. Yeah, I've heard so much about it, but I haven't seen it. No. Um, yeah. Um, we. Uh, I'm trying to remember what we've been, what we uh, have binged watch. There's so many like now streaming services are coming out oh, with them yeah. once a week yeah so we so there's not a ton that we've been binge watching You've but just been, like doing one she hulk a week yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i um yeah we've been watching um the new hulu show reboot oh yeah yeah that's with yeah. with um uh keegan michael key and judy greer and yeah. um Rachel Bloom. Yeah, yeah, that's that we saw the first episode. That's good. That, I really like that show. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh so yeah, that's the only thing I can remember right now that we're watching. It's a good oh, recommendation. But, oh, go on. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just another show just popped into my head. Tell me. Um, I need recommendations too. <laughs> I could just talk about um, this for um hours. Um there's uh, the season premiere of The Rookie was just last Sunday. Right. So um, if you haven't seen that show, I highly recommend that one because that is um, one of my favorites. That's Nathan Fillion, right? Am I right yes. about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I should definitely, we'll definitely, we'll tune in on your recommendation. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I think... Uh, I think my mom watched The Bear, and so I'm going to go down and bring her all your recommendations. Okay, great. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so is there a show that you wish would be rebooted because it has a character that you would love to play? That's a great, what a good question that I need to think about. What did I used to like? Hmm. I mean, as a, I mean, this is such a this is such a deep dive back that no, this will mean nothing to anybody in America, and maybe nothing to anyone in England, to be honest. But there was this show called Dark Seasons when I was a kid, right? Um, and it was by Russell T. Davis, who uh, ran Doctor Who for a little while. He 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 was he was he wrote Doctor Who, and he's writing it again now. And he did a show called It's a Sin last year. He's a brilliant, brilliant writer. But he wrote this kids show that I remember. Another like weird how all my memories about being a kid are being scared. But it was a kid. <laughs> but it was a kids show about like this this principal in a school who gives a bunch of kids. Um, uh, computers because he wants to take over the world using computers or some crazy idea um but he was 
he was this very cool guy in a long black jacket with like sunglasses and bleach bond spiky hair. And I remember thinking that he was simultaneously the coolest person and the scariest person I've ever seen. So if that came back, I, I this is me throwing my hat in the ring for the most niche possible answer to your question. <laughs> I go with Dark Seasons, please, Russell. <laughs> no, one, no one's going to have any idea what that's about. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, but I, I like that answer. Not knowing, um, uh, yeah. I don't think I've ever been asked a question like that before. That's so good to be asked something brand new after like fifteen years of asking questions in interviews. Like I've known that's such a good one. I need to really think about it. But that's my answer for now. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um. It, so, is there a motto or quotation that you live by? Hmm. I mean, I really loved the movie Dead Poets Society when I was when I was sort of eighteen, nineteen, and loved Robin Williams in that film. And that "Carpe Diem sees the day" was the was the motto of that. But it became such a sort of it became like a main. It was sort of taken on and adopted by a mainstream because the sh- the film was such a huge success. But I do like the I like the concept of that. I try and live by the idea that every day is about making the most of it and um and there you know there are there are days where that's really hard and there are days where i know i haven't done it and there are months that go past where i think why have i let this time slip away but um i I, if i could live by that i think there is that's a that's a beautiful thing to live by oh yeah i yeah i really like that um so my last question for you is who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? I mean, that's, uh, I'm going to give like a, I'm going to give a, a soppy answer to that one. <laughs> um, in that my, it's going to be my why, because uh we had a baby about a year ago and it's just the mo- it's the most incredible experience to watch someone who you already admire like be a brilliant mum and and like go through that whole thing and then like how, like like do you know change elements of yourself to sacrifice elements of yourself to to help this this little beautiful little guy that we've got in our life suddenly and uh i already admired her um and she was already my favorite person, but now she's upgraded. She'll take the upgrade to superhero very happily. I'll get her a cape. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I am. Um, uh, yeah, my um, mom and my sister are my best friends and um, they are my superheroes. So. Oh, that's great. I hope our son feels the same about us. That would be really yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for calling in. I just had the best time talking to you. I would just love to keep talking to you. Oh, thanks, so. Maya. Me too. Thank you so much. It's been it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Tom, you know that you always have a home here at Children's Hospital Colorado if you're ever in the area. Swing on by. Meet the patients. They'd love to see you. I would love to. Thank you. I know Maya will keep us updated on where we can find you and what you're up to. Great. Yeah. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.